when you love Jesus, sometimes it seems like it's a bunch of old people, doesn't it? When you go into church, all you see is gray hair. What about young people and the excitement of loving Jesus? My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. This is a program in which we're trying to experience the power of Jesus coming into our world, turning us upside down, bringing change, bringing new life. I have with you, with you and with me, a very special guest today. Miranda is a, is a young lady that I've known for, well, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. it, it goes on way back with your, through your beautiful aunt, Sister Rosario, mm -hmm. and uh, through your grandparents and, and friends. And uh, I got, uh, I kind of came in touch with you again. We were at a convention in, in Anaheim, and I came up and I said, come on, why don't you get on the show? And so <laughs> very innocently you said, oh, okay, and so here we are. Yep. You know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about, as we do on the show, I want to talk about the, the power of God coming into our lives and bringing about change, you know, something that can turn us around and give us a purpose and a, and a direction we're all looking for that, I think, as young people. But uh, tell us a little bit about, if you would, where were you, Miranda, before something happened with God in your life that kind of turned you around? Is that a fair question? Yeah, fair question, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, where was I? I was lost. Um, I grew up in Huntington Beach. Um, I have two amazing parents and two older sisters. Um, was raised Catholic in the Catholic Church and um, was very involved in sports and activities all throughout our lives and um, played basketball in high school, oh. played basketball in college. Um, I, from the age of, of about 19 to 23, is the last stage that. I would say I was wrapped up in the world and kind of straight away from God and... Well, what do you mean wrapped up in the world? Is that being in sports? What, what kind of work do you do? What, what, and when you got out of college, what kind of in, what, what's your business? Well, I work in real estate. Real estate. Um, so I played basketball, I, had, I got a scholarship, Ooh. and then I moved back home to my parents. And um, from the last few years of college, I, you know, started going out with friends a lot more, going out to bars, going, being at the cool places, and, you know, slowly my priorities and what was important to me was, you know, and it all happened, now that I look back, it happened very slowly. Mm. And it's, it's scary how um, all the temptations of the world are literally thrown you know, in, in the faces of the youth. For example, what are some of those um, temptations that come to you? I mean, sex, drinking, drugs, even things, you know, I think ma things being materialistic. I mean, even smaller things that you don't think of necessarily drugs or alcohol, but, um, you know, being... Clothes and <laughs> Clothes cars and, and car, exactly. Um, wealth, you know, money. Yes. So I, you know, I always felt different from my friends and peers growing up as I, I, you know, from my conscience and what I knew was right and wrong. But during the stage throughout my teens, my later teens and, you know, early 20s, it was, you know, I was dating and um, my priorities soon were where I was gonna go Friday night and who was going, what I wasn't aware, all these things. And before I knew it, um, you know, God, I made him out to be a very distant, very um, not loving God. Mm -hmm. And that was my own stupidity and my own, what I made him out to be. So although 
I think deep down I knew, um, you know, going out drinking and doing things that are by no means honorable to God. I, I everything was so, all the junk in my life would, you know, shut up that, that quiet whisper that he, that was there deep down. And I think is in all of us deep down in our conscience. But, um, you know, with friends and with, um, you know, lifestyles and people that, and all the temptations, it's, it's hard. I mean, you have to. One time I was talking with a, with a young person your age uh, and um, rather, rather important job with a big computer company in, in our nation. And I asked her the question that, that you're kind of coming up with, you know, what, where are young people today? And her comment was that a lot of them don't have much purpose. Mm -hmm. And they're searching for a purpose. They're searching for something that they can latch on to to let the fire of the excitement about money, cars, and, and all the other things that are there that can be a drive and, and a force. But there was something deeper that they wanted to have. They wanted their, their life to have more meaning. Mm -hmm. it, does that, well, we use that oftentimes, but it, I think it's true, huh? Oh, yeah. That's funny you say that because I, I remember getting to a point where the more that I filled myself with, um, you know, all of clothes and going out with friends and things of the world, um, the more and more I felt empty. But mm -hmm. it's the more and more you try to fill, like, it's this quick fix, you know, that quick fix happiness that is not lasting. And I was very, I became very unsettled and anxious deep down inside. And um, I remember getting to a point where one morning I got up and walked over to the mirror and I literally, I looked at the mirror into my eyes and I literally said out loud, who are you mm. and what is your purpose? What, what are you doing? And I kid you not, I saw nothing past my, it was a very dull and just deadness in my eyes. Mm. And it was scary because I didn't, before I knew it, you know, as the years went on, that was who I was. And mm -hmm. what was I doing? What, what were all these things that, you know, all, all of these things are passing. I mean, they're, everything here in this world is, will come and go. And I, so that got me thinking. But, um, did something happen? Did something happen to something turn this happened. around? <laughs> so, Tell us what happened. Um, this past year, about a year ago, my mom, she'd been, um, you know, nagging me to um, start the confirmation classes. Because oh. as I was, you know, baptized and I had my first communion, I, I never was confirmed. And I... I started the program in high school, and then I started the program a few years later in college, and something always came up. And I was too busy, I didn't care, I didn't, you know, I, I, made, I had an excuse always. So about a year ago, there was an adult confirmation class starting, so I thought, okay, okay, I'll sign up. So and I started going to the classes, and this is about a year ago. Um, and I enjoyed them but I wasn't completely into it. So um, this past April, at my confirmation, I walked up and was waiting nervously to um, receive the blessing from the bishop. And as soon as he touched me, um, I felt a jolt of fire go up through my arms. Hello? Into my entire body, I mean just heat. And I, as soon as I sat down back in my seat in the pews, I just started crying and crying and crying. And I mean, it was instantly, my life started flashing before my eyes. It was like, I mean, I couldn't, I can't, I still have a hard time explaining the emotions that were going on, but I know that from then on, my life would be different. And this, it was like a new person was born and the Holy Spirit knocked me down and said, wake up <laughs> and wow. look at your life and what's going on and what's important in life. So 
Things started to change. Things started to change. Listen, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you there. I want to hear what this road is. We're going to go to a break. Okay. We've got a special message we want people to hear. And then we're going to come back, and then I want to hear what was, this, what was this road, and now how does this work out, this fire of the Holy Spirit? Listen to this message, please, but then make sure you come on back because we're going to hear a beautiful story of how the Holy Spirit can change people's lives. Stay tuned. Thank you so very much for being willing to be part of the mighty 800 family of supporters of this television ministry. I've come to you in the past and told you we need that support. We need 800 people who are willing to give us a donation every month to allow us to overcome the big costs of producing the program, getting it up on the satellite, and getting it into your home to bring blessings. I'm happy to say that as we started out with 418, now the number has moved to 505. Thank you so very much for being willing to become part of this experience of preaching the gospel. You are a vital part of this. When you join with your prayers and with your donations, you allow us to move away from the brink of, oh, well, that was a program we're just going to stop, to allowing us to, to start again and be refreshed and renewed to preaching the gospel in more and more ways. Now, I know, I know that as I come to you asking for financial support, this is a tough financial time in our country. But still, I've got to believe that preaching the good news of Christ through this powerful medium in which we come to hundreds of thousands of people, that this medium can allow the good news of Christ to change lives, and that's worth all the sacrifices that you want to make. Please, make sure that you're part of this family of the mighty 800. We need 295 more people. Would you please, if you're not part of the, the mighty 800 already, would you join and become someone that we can eliminate that number and have 800 people allowing the good news of Christ to be preached powerfully on television. Miranda, you've, uh, you've told us a wonderful story of, a, of, of what I probably is the experience of many young people getting caught, a, caught up in a world in which it's the dating and the sex and the drugs and the money and the, and the, uh, the clothes and the cars and the influence in other people's lives. But then something happened. You, you came to church. You went through the process. How long did the, the preparation for confirmation last? Um, the classes were about three to four months. Okay, three to four months. You came in and then you, you received the sacrament. We call it a sacrament in the Catholic Church mm -hmm. of, of uh, confirmation. The bishop lays his hands on you during that. And he asks the Holy Spirit to come to you, which is like a completion and a, and a fullness of the gift of baptism. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit comes into your life. And you, mm -hmm. you had a transforming experience in your life. Where did this, where did this experience take you? What, uh, all of a sudden, you, you told us the story of looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing only emptiness in your eyes. Did you look in, your, look in the mirror again after, after this experience? And did oh, yeah, because <laughs> I didn't recognize myself. I said, who, who is this? I, I would look, at, look into my eyes often, and it was a completely different. Um, really? I saw a, a glowing, uh, yeah, a different person. Wow. I, um, I felt like I was, like you said earlier, turned upside down completely. And trying, you know, shortly after my confirmation, within that week, I remember, it was so, the Holy Spirit was so powerful inside of me. I, a lot of times, couldn't even, I couldn't even put it into words, and all that would come out was tears. Mm. And, you know, I've heard of the gift of tears, and yes. I think I've been blessed with that. Okay, okay. I mean, I would cry two, three times a day, and um, I had to do more. I was like, this is, this is the most amazing thing I've ever experience I've ever felt and this the past 24 years I've been 
you know, so I, I had a lot of reflections, a lot of, no. um, you know, insight, a lot of, um, I think a lot of healing too. So, you know, I would, I would think back like all these years I've been, you know, going, going to mass, but not really there. And here Jesus Christ is hanging on the cross and he, who died for each and every one of us, for me, and all the times I turn my back on him, for all these things that, mm -hmm. of the world that have no, I mean, what are they? There's no su substance to all these other things that I was drawn into. Um, so that first week, I, I was like, I have to do more. I wanna go <laughs> travel the world. I wanna <laughs> go, I wanna be a missionary. And I, I need to do something. This is, and I would tell my mom and she's like, Okay, just okay, calm down. Like, I was like, no, I have to do more. This is, and um, so I thought, okay, I'll start going to mass in the mornings. Uh, okay, so there's 6:30 a.m. mass, um, a weekday mass. So I remember a week after my confirmation, it was Sunday, and I thought, okay, I'll I'll go tomorrow morning. So I went Monday morning, and was crying half the time just sitting there, you know, and being able to receive the Eucharist, being able to have him, his body, eat his body. And it, I just, and, have, and we exposed the uh, Blessed Sacrament during the week, after the weekday Mass. So, um, so basically one day turned into a week and the week turn into months and of going to daily mass in the mornings um, before I go to work. And um, I, the first couple months, I um, was very, felt removed. Like I had no, all of my desires, my old desires were completely dried up. What uh, what were some of the the options of new directions that might come into your life? What did you start doing that maybe was resonating with the presence of the Spirit in your heart now? Um. Well, yeah, I started the certainly my going to mass. My going priorities to mass. and the way I spent my time was, I mean, a completely different life. I. Um, oh yeah, going starting going to mass in the mornings and. Um, I wanted to, I started to, you know, reach out and within my own church with different ministries. Um, my aunt is a Carmelite nun, so I um, have become very close with her since and um, have helped her out with some things. There's one, Fa one thing that was interesting. You came right here to San Bernardino, right? Mm -hmm. Not very far, to a place called Mary's Table. Um, it was a it's a center for taking care of the homeless. Mm -hmm. And also you told me today that I didn't realize it's also a home for young women that uh, keep their children instead of having abortion. Yes. Tell us a little of the experience of, that was one of the natural results of this Holy Spirit experience, experience of coming to Mary's table. What, 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 did, what did that mean to you as maybe making it concrete? Oh, it was, um, it was an amazing experience. I, I took the day off work and I've, um, Father Barry is who started the... Father Michael Barry. Michael Barry. Good he friend, started, yes. Um, Mary's Mercy Center. And so we have we had been in contact and I said, oh, I'd love to come out and and see and, you know, see what you're doing and see and experience it and help out. So I took I took the day off work and I brought um, Father Angelo, who's one of the priests at St. Bonaventure. Him and I went and we... Father Mike Berry took us took us around Mary's Mercy Center or Mary's Table where they have the homeless feedings and the um, they have clothing and you know they can take showers and things. Oh boy, and then, that's great! Yes. And then Veronica's home, which is right down the street, is the home for the um, unwed mothers, so that they don't. Well, see, this this is getting down to the probably the question we all have and what a wonderful story you know here you're going from from here and then you have this strong experience of the Holy Spirit and yet it it can't be something that you just keep in yourself you know oh I got this Holy Spirit and now I feel so good 
it has to be something that pours out to other people. And I'm hearing you say that really is the heart of what it means now to, to make this Holy Spirit real by starting to do the ministries, mm -hmm. starting to care for perhaps the, the homeless, mm -hmm. even these young women that are, that are looking for love and, love and care in the loneliness of their struggle with abortion. Mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Miranda, could I ask you something of you? I didn't ask you this before, but um, there's, there's some people, uh, some young people that are, that are in that camera right there. <laughs> could I ask you to talk to them? Would you, would you say something to them in terms of just personally out of your own heart where you were and what, what advice would you give to them and, and uh, try to talk to them right there? Yeah, just talk, okay. talk, talk, talk to that. Just, just say right into that eye. I would say that although um, although there are a lot of things in this world that are attractive and seem that they will bring happiness and bring fulfillment, there is nothing here on this earth that will bring the happiness and the peace that God brings, and it there is no comparison. And, um, you know, for me, it's, there, there, there are tough times still, you know, there are, there are ups and downs even with God in your life, but I think the ongoing, um, for me, every morning I try to really surrender myself, surrender myself today, this is your day, and, you know, um, just give everything up to Him. and. He, I mean, he died for each and every one of us, for me, for Father Manny, every single person. And to keep that, to keep the crucifixion and his death in our minds every single day and in our hearts, um, you'll feel him and he will never, he will never leave you. And he's the only thing and um, person that will bring complete fulfillment and happiness. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Miranda. Thank you very much. May, may this experience shine out and touch many, many people with the love. What happens with your work in, in real estate? Uh, does, has Jesus made a change in the, in the people mm -hmm. you have to deal with? You're, you deal with commercial real estate, mm -hmm. so it's not just a, an everyday house and, and a family. What, what kind of a change happens in, in the way you deal with people now uh, as to happen? That, that's what's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I naturally have, I mean, a lot more compassion for people and just, I mean, people that I work with and people within my company have actually, there's been a lot of conversation and things as they've noticed the change. Something's wrong with that lady. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? You seem too happy. What? What's, so there's been, there's been a lot of conversations and opportunities um, within work. And speaking of my work, I actually, that's one of the many desires that um, I recently have had a desire to get my master's in theology. Mm. I used to be business, real estate, that's what I was going to do. But so in every way, there's, I'm open and um, so we'll see. We'll we're going we're to come right back. We're, I'm, I want you to stay tuned. We're going to be praying with some of the people that have been contacting us and praying for some of the, the young people that really perhaps are searching for something and maybe and to allow your words to sink deeply into their lives. Stay tuned, listen to this message, and then come on back and pray with us, please. The Bible is your way of coming in contact with God. I want you to do something a little more contemporary. I want you to be able to use your computer. I have a wonderful gift that I want to send you for your donation to allow us to continue this television ministry. It's called Searchable Bible, the Contemporary English Version. It's for Windows. It's a chance for you to be able to search and find out those places in the Bible that you've been questioning. It's also a wonderful way of getting an encyclopedia, a, a map of what happens in the Bible. Also a chance 
to be able to study the entire Bible over the course of a year, a, a plan, a, a lesson plan to do that. Please, remember, we need your help. And allow me to help you with this gift for your gift, the Searchable Bible Contemporary English Version. Right, call right now. Miranda, one of the things that we uh, we're excited about is trying to be a little bit more contemporary, if you will, through the ministry of using the internet. Uh, we have a web page, mm -hmm. and then people can come to the web page and not only get in, get in touch with watching the program, your program, not necessarily at the time when it's on, on the networks, but they can watch it 24-7, and they can hear you, and they can play you again and again and again. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but also, uh. the, the beauty of, of what we have through the internet is a chance for people to let us know about their prayer intentions mm -hmm. and their needs, and we pray for them. We bring all of the intentions together. We pray for them on a regular basis. We have mass here at the, at the, uh, at the studio. We come together and pray, and we believe that God brings miracles mm -hmm. into people's lives. And so, mm -hmm. as you're listening to Miranda's story, I, I ask you please to think about the uh, challenge of changing your life, of accepting Christ and allowing Christ to be that change. But would you tell us about that? Would you write us? Write us about how Christ is changing your life. Write us also and let us know what you need. Is it cancer? Listen, listen to some of these stories. Um, there's a struggle here with a family with a, their husband and there's a, a real relationship difficulty that's going on uh, in this family. This is from Texas, a lady by the name of Sally uh, praying for Cyrus um, and the children, uh, especially that they should have Christian principles. Uh, writing into us here from North Carolina, uh, God wants to heal her husband's heart mm -hmm. and, and allow the marriage to start to have a blessing in what they're going, going through. He uh, wants to thank God and allow God to be able to bring the money that they need. Boy, this is a tough time. And we turn to God, we mm -hmm. turn to God with an answer. Here's mm -hmm. from Kentucky, I oh, used to live in Kentucky, needs a job. You know, and also struggling with the divorce. L look at these, look at these situations. Mm -hmm. Put your hands down here, come on, let's, let's just pray. Lord, we believe that your love is unending and your power is very great with all of these people. Enter into their lives, Lord, with your peace, with your healing, and with your fire. And may the beautiful blessing that you've given Miranda continue to grow and may it touch all of our hearts. And may Jesus' love for you always Make you smile. God bless you. You did it. That's it? That's it. <laughs> oh. <laughs>